Okay, so I forgot we need to implement pagination first before we move on to the one-to-many relationship. But pagination is really easy because Java gives you all of the tools to do it. Everything's built right in and implementing pagination is almost as easy as literally just typing a few lines of code. But we also need to return back an object like this. Even though Java does give you the tools to implement pagination really easily, one of the things that you need to do after that is you need to make a specialized or a custom object to return all these results back. And this is, you, whenever you use an API, the results more than often will look like this if you're returning back a very large list. And one of the reasons that we need pagination is because if your database is full of thousands of records, if you don't have pagination, it could cause huge performance problems by returning all of the records like that. So one of the reasons why pagination is so ubiquitous and so important is because of that. So let's go ahead into IntelliJ. And the first thing that we need to do is actually go into back into our service. We need to actually modify our service. So our get all Pokemon right now doesn't really have any parameters. So we're just gonna go into here and we're just going to give it parameters of page number and we will give it a parameter of page size. size. And because we do that, it's going to break our method inside of the actual service implementation. So we're gonna go into the service implementation and instead of creating a new method, what we are going to do is we're just going to go inside of our get all Pokemon right here and add our actual parameter. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go page number. We're going to go int page size, just like this. And this is where the code that I was talking about Java gives you comes into practice. So we're going to go into here. We're going to have pageable. We're going to create this thing called a pageable object that is going to use a page request. So we're going to go page request. And then we'll go of page number and page size. So here, and this is going to create an object that you are going to pass in to your actual find all method. So look how easy this is. So you just go into here, then you can pass in your pageable object into the actual Pokemon repository. But we can't stop there just yet. We need to add this thing called page because now it's going to be a different type because we passed in um, this thing right here. Okay, so that looks good. Now what we need to do is we need to go down here. We need to get the content. So we're gonna go here. Um, so list of, we're gonna go list of Pokemon. Then we're going to go list, call it, I'm just gonna call it a list of Pokemon again. So go list of Pokemon is equal to Pokemons. This is going to be more than one, so I'm going to call this Pokemon. So I'm going to go Pokemon's dot get content, and what this is going to do is this is going to get all the content within that page thing that we just talked about, and this is just a method that the actual uh, Java framework gives you. So we go down here, and this looks pretty much good to go. So we're going to go select dot to list. And we have a related problem here. And we, okay, so we need to can't forget about our controller. This is where requ uh, request params are going to come back in. So I'm, since this is going to be really long, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to say request. Let's see here, request params, request param, and this is going to get a page number. We're going to go page number and default value, we can go ahead and set this default value to zero. And we will say this is not required. So if they don't want to put in the actual page or anything, they don't have to. So we'll go page number. And then we're gonna go back down to here. So go back down and we'll go request param. And we'll go value is equal to page size. Okay, so we go down here. So go default value is equal to 10. And required is equal to false. And 
int page size. Okay, so go ahead, put parentheses around that. Then this is where we are going to pass in our page number and our page size. So right here, we've got page number and page size. So that should be pretty much it for the first part. Remember, we still got to create this custom object that I was talking about. So we'll go in here and go ahead into our postman and to the get all. And we also need to type in the actual um, question mark right here. Then we need to pass in the page number. So we'll go page number is equal to zero. And we have our ampersand right here and page size is equal to page size is equal to 10. So we'll go here and we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm thinking this should be it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And because we only have one value, it's not going to show the actual page size. So let me just pause the video really quick. I'm going to go ahead and make 10 or so Pokemon. I'll make like 20 Pokemon and let's go ahead and test it out and make sure that's working. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. I set the I added like 10 Pokemon. You don't have to do this by the way if you don't if you don't want to test it. Feel uh, feel free to move along if you don't want to, but I'm going to go ahead and test this cuz it would be kind of wrong of me not to test it, but uh just went ahead and set the page size to 5 so that we only have 5 results. Went ahead hit send and I was debugging it, making sure that everything looked good. And if you look here, we have five results in our page size. Okay, but we are not out of the woods just yet. Remember that we need to create a custom object just like this so that it looks presentable when we return it back from the API. Otherwise, people won't be able to use our pagination if you don't have these uh, things down here. I don't know exactly what they're called. I just think they're called things because the API or whatever is going to consume your API is going to need these in order to kind of kind of work or think about if Facebook didn't have the number of records or the pages, it couldn't do infinite scroll and you couldn't be able to use a lot of these features. So we definitely need to go back and make sure that we are creating this custom object thing that I'm talking about. So first thing is that we need to actually go in and create the custom object. And you can add it anywhere, but I'm going to add it to DTOs because it's kind of more or less a DTO in itself. So I'm going to say, call this Pokemon response, or you could call this Pokemon get all response. You could call it anything, but I'm just going to call it Pokemon response since it's kind of uh, going to be used across many. Uh, it could be used across many of the APIs. So we'll go into here and I'm going to go ahead and put the Pokemon DTO into here. And I'm going to call this content. You could call this data. You could call this content. You could call this whatever you want to. It, does, it really doesn't matter. And then go down to here. And let's also make sure that we have the int page number. So we've got int page number. And we have int page size. So we also have our page size here. We're going to go private long. And, and we're going to go total elements. And because the elements could be bigger than the actual integer, max integer value. Let's go ahead and just put a long in there. So we'll go int, and then we'll go total pages. Go total pages, and then we'll go private int. And actually, okay, let's just add, this is kind of a nicety, but we can add last as well too. I think last is, is, is a good one. Okay, so we'll go into here. Now what we need to do is instead of returning the actual Pokemon DTO, all that we really need to do is to go into our actual Pokemon uh, service implementation. So we go into our Pokemon service implementation right here. Then what we are going to do is we are just going to map it to the Pokemon response object. So we're going to go to get all Pokemon. Okay, so we have our get content. Now what we need to do after this return is, let's see, I'm trying to think here. So we're going to go list. Uh, Pokemon DTO and what we are going to return is a list of or let's just call this content so we'll go content just like this and we will re return a list of Pokemon and this is going to be converted into a string okay so next what we need to do is we need to go get our actual Pokemon response 
So we go into here, we're gonna go Pokemon response and we're just going to new up this DTO because this whole entire point is to return this in a nice looking fashion. And we're going to map this Pokemon response to this. So we're gonna go into here and we're going for our first one, we're going to set the content. So we go set content and we're just going to go ahead, toss in our content. And this is gonna look uh, really good. So we go into here, let me see. And for some reason, oh, I need to go back and I need to add Lombok to the actual Pokemon uh, DTO up here. So just remember, go back and do our Pokemon response, really important, and add this data. Otherwise, you're not going to get access to your setters right there. Okay, so next is going to be, and watch how cool this is. So we'll go set page number, and then we'll go take what we got from our page and we get all of these cool methods to go ahead and pass into here. So we can pass in the get number and we go Pokemon response. We can also pass in the set page size just like this. And we can go pass in from our pageable object the same exact thing. So we go Pokemon, uh, get size, go Pokemon down here, Pokemon response and set total page elements. So let's see, set total elements right here. And I'm going to set this to Pokemon dot get total elements. Pokemon response dot get total elements. Okay, that looks good. So now we're gonna go into here. So we're gonna go Pokemon response dot set total pages. So here, set total pages, then we're gonna go Pokemon, dot get Pokemon response, dot get total pages. Actually, these need to be Pokemons. So we go into here, so we're gonna go Pokemons, because we need to get these from the pageable object. Okay, so Pokemons, dot get total pages. Then I'm gonna go down here, Pokemon response, and then we're going to set the last, and same thing, we're going to get this from our pageable object. So the pageable object thing that we just did up here is where all of this data that we're going to get in return through our custom Pokemon API response. So we didn't have to do any logic of our own. Like I said, this pageable object is very versatile and it allows you to create these. You have to create the object, but it gives you all of the data. So you don't have to actually, like I said, do write any of your own logic to make any of this. So we're gonna go Pokemon response and that should, so now we need to return just the Pokemon response. And because this is like another thing too that uh, may not, you know, may confuse you is that because we're not returning, we're not returning a list anymore, we're returning a Pokemon response and the, the list is going to exist within the Pokemon response. If you look here, this list, in this content thing is where the actual Pokemon are going to exist at. So hopefully that didn't uh, confuse you. Okay, so here, and got some kind of error. Oh, I need to go back into my interface here and I need to fix this. So we've got here, now it is a Pokemon response instead of a list. So we're gonna go down here, so the Pokemon response, and now we have another related problem. And the get all Pokemon now needs to return a Pokemon response instead of the actual um, list of DT or list DTO Pokemon. So we're gonna go in here and what we're just going to return is our Pokemon response. So here and let's also just return turn the Pokemon service. So we'll go Pokemon service dot get all Pokemon, pass in the page number, and we'll pass in the page size just like this. Actually, let's go ahead and wrap this in a response entity. I think it just looks a little bit better with the inside of a response entity. So we'll go here and we'll return a response entity of Pokemon response. And let me see here. We also need to return a status. So we'll return status 
HTTP status. Okay. Okay. So that was quite a lot. Let's go back and test it to make sure that it's returning this custom object that we made. So just going to go ahead and boot it up. I'm really hoping this works. If it doesn't work, I'll have to go back and fix it, but oh well. So here, and we've got our content. And it's also showing up our total page elements and our total pages. And it shows our last as well too. So a little uncertain there, but it works just like we planned. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.